It's true, and, and, and many people with mental illness and do tend to isolate, or you know, some do have have mm -hmm. issues with isolation, and and or they either intentionally or unintentionally, you know, right. feel isolated, and so it it does really help with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, the, the one the one room, and after the mail had come, then <laughs> all the girls gathered for <laughs> gossip and cards. And <laughs> it was just kind of fun. Uh, yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, Sarah could probably give some firsthand testimony about Melrose Ridge. Sure. Well, um, I live in one of the apartments there. Um, I think it's really nice. It's uh, nice and roomy. I mean, it's not the biggest apartment, but it has room. I, you know, I have my TV, um, a, a bathroom, and a small bedroom. Um, I spend a lot of time watching TV. <laughs> But uh, I used to go out in the common room and watch TV, but I don't do it as much now that I have a cable package. So, uh, it's but, but I do hang out with my neighbors. I see them as I come and go. Uh, I have coffee with them sometimes. So, it's been really nice to live there, so. Good. Yeah, Sarah was uh, one of them that was on a waiting list for a long time mm -hmm. for, uh, for those apartments. And so we can certainly testify that there's never been any, any shortage of people who really want those <laughs> those spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we just feel really, really fortunate that, that she was able to get in there. So how long have you been in there, Sarah? Um, since October. Okay. I think. Yeah, October. And do you see that as, as a long-term place to live, or do you see I'd that as? I'd say so. I mean, I'm not like going to retire there or anything, but uh, I'll, I'll live there for a while until uh, my family moves and I decide to move with them, you know, and just kind of depends on what happens. Yeah, I think there. as long as we so. live in Iowa City, that yeah. it's just, it couldn't be better as, as far as a, a place to live. What do you do during the day? Hmm? What do you do during the day then? Oh, um, a lot of times I do spend time at my parents' house and uh, my, my dog is there, so I like to hang out with my dog mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, I watch TV in the morning, and I do my exercise videos. I I clean, I I cook, you know. So I'm pr I'm pretty independent there. So. Okay. And then she's got a work schedule, but it happens yeah. that her work schedule is evening and weekend. Oh, what do you so do? her her free time is is uh, more during the day. Yeah. What do you do for work? Um, I work at Chatham Oaks, actually. I'm a dishwasher there. And then I work at Oak Knoll uh, Retirement Center, and I do dishes there, too, so. Mm -hmm. Don't call it in because of the weather at Chatham. I yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. No excuse for not Just being able to get there. Yeah. <laughs> we need you again. <laughs> well, they've done that once in a while, yeah. call and say <laughs> that they need a sub today. But yeah. no, So she's worked during the day a few times, but the, her regular hours is, is the supper supper time at Chatham Oaks and the weekends at Oak Knoll. Mm. Always say yes when they ask you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does. You want to make them to think you're in it. indispensable. That's yeah. right. right. Yeah. You make more money that That's way. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Is there anything else you'd like to add about Chatham Oaks at all? Or? Um, not really. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you want me to, to kind of? You're, you're uh, pretty content there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah actually has lived at both Chatham Oaks and Abbey in Marion in the past. And uh, um, you want to talk about your diagnosis and kind of when that was? Um, yeah. I, well, I first was sent to the Abbey Center um, when I was 18. 19, 19, I think, yeah. And uh, I spent a lot of time there. I, I kind of bounced in and out from like hospitals or other care facilities. Um, and then when I was about 21 or so, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Oh no, it was earlier than that. I think I, I think it was within several months of when you first went to Abbey. Okay. Um, yeah, um, Sarah was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And um, I'm sure it's quite common with people who receive that diagnosis that it takes quite a long time 
to for medicines to be figured out and for everything to stabilize and um, I think it can take a very very long time for some people and at this point we have to just say it seems like maybe Sarah is one of the lucky ones because uh, she has is doing so fantastically well now and um, and very stable on medicines and and no uh, symptoms of, of schizophrenia but you know she had some really rough years and we we had some really rough years and the residential care facilities were very essential in the process of of um, getting stabilized and staying safe at the time I mean that's a big reason for the RCFs mm -hmm. is it's a matter of uh, when a person needs um, supervision that the family cannot provide anymore because it's 24 hours you know and if you feel like you can't leave your son or daughter alone mm -hmm. um, you know my husband and I both work and you know we can't be there all the time mm -hmm. so uh, very, very essential for for medicine stabilization and personal safety, and um, those were not easy years by any means. But she's 25 yeah. and a half, yeah. <laughs> and just doing so so well. So yeah. I, I, that's I guess one of the things too is to just share mm -hmm. how um, how well things can go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that certainly is the hope that mm -hmm. that's the way it goes. That, yeah. that the the uptime certainly. If you stick with the doctors and try the try the meds, I mean, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I would call myself not an expert, although I've done an awful lot of yeah. reading and, <laughs> and have personal experience with with Sarah. But schizophrenia is, to my knowledge, not something that you just hope will get better and go away. I mean, mm. it, it really needs attention. Well, I do a little take your meds on your own. Yeah, I take my meds on my own. Okay. Um, I'm kind of OCD about it, you know, like I have to take them at this time and I have to take them at this time. I have to refill them at this time, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, like for a while, when I was was in my, the residential care facilities, sometimes I wouldn't take my meds. Like I just would refuse. So, but now I'm on a lot better track. So, okay. and I learned yeah. that my meds help. So, okay. that's great. That pretty much has been my experience through the years. Is you know, folks just to need to accept the fact yeah. that. You need meds. But they need the meds. Mm -hmm. And meds are so good. Mm -hmm. And so often, it takes a long time to find the right meds. Yeah, it does. It so does. you don't feel very good about yeah. taking it if you don't feel like it's helping right. or it's making you feel strange, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, uh, it just, uh, and the RCF helps with that because they see mm -hmm. to it that you take it and um, and then it'll, it'll eventually work out you hope that the right meds will be found and and uh, things start going better yeah. Yeah. and with the um, with the new mental health redesign um, the, the, <laughs> the future of RCFs um, is somewhat uncertain um, I, I personally feel like there will be a uh, place for RCFs, or there definitely is a place for RCFs, as Kristen said, it's a Absolutely. very needed service. But I think there will be a place for us within the, um, the core services that can be offered to all Iowans. I think it's just a matter of getting it figured out what will be allowed to do, what will be called, and how will be funded. Mm -hmm. And that's not a simple task, and right now, there are many things that are uncertain within the mental health redesign. Um, I think the counties within our region that's being formed are very supportive of RCF services mm -hmm. and see them as, as a very needed service. Mm -hmm. um, that said, they also need to um, work hard to figure out how to have the money to fund those mm -hmm. services. RCF services are a non-Medicaid funded service, unlike 
um, our SCL program, we use habilitation uh, funding through Medicaid. So it makes it a little more complicated. It, that falls on the counties and soon to be the regions. So um, we are hoping we can do, you know, provide some of the services that are being talked about, like crisis intervention and subacute uh, care services that are often much of what we do now. Mm -hmm. um, so if we get those, if those, once those rules are written and get in place, you know, we'll, hopefully we'll find that that will be something that yeah. we we can offer. And um, you know, we work a great deal with the University of Iowa. We're on located on Melrose Avenue, so we're just right down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and the university hospitals are our number one referral source. Um, hospitals in general are, but. Um, I think anyone who has experienced any kind of mental health crisis can That's attest right. to the fact that right. it it's terrible. You get into the emergency room and it's not necessarily their fault. They're just overloaded with, yeah. with patients and they can't get to people quick enough and they don't have beds available and people end up being sent across the state. Yeah, um, you know. Absolutely, I, I'm really worried about uh, that if there would be any decrease in services, because it seems to me that, that there needs to be quite an increase in services rather than any kind of decrease. But our experience was that, you know, Sarah would be in, in, in crisis and there would be times where she'd go to the hospital. And then the hospital has to decide whether it, to admit somebody or not. But, and generally speaking, I think that it's if there's a person, if there's a danger to yourself or others, that's that's when they'll admit you. And I, Sarah never went to the emergency room and was refused to be admitted to the hospital, so that did work. But the hospital doesn't keep you very long. I mean, a lot of those stays in the hospitals, they want to be like three days. Mm -hmm. And three well, days is not enough to get over a crisis, you that's know. That's the role anymore. That's yeah. right. You know, that's for, right. For most anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, if you're it is. if you're staying more than three days, yeah. then, mm -hmm. wow. I mm -hmm. mean, one time I think you did have a long time in the hospital, like five weeks or something, because it was and that wasn't even an emergency room. Uh, entrance to the hospital, but it was because there really needed to be a change in meds, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it seemed too dangerous to do it any place except under, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a sort of constant doctor supervision. Mm -hmm. So that, but all of the other times uh, were short, and a lot of times then when you're released, you're released into an RCF. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, if you're lucky, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, if you're unlucky, you're just left off to the, mm -hmm. you know, out to the street or something. You mm -hmm. know, it's it that's quite awful. But um, Sarah was always released to uh, an RCF, um, but maybe there wouldn't be room at Chatham Oaks, mm -hmm. and then she'd mm -hmm. go to Abbey, or maybe the the higher care you mentioned, Vivian, of the PMI at Abbey, maybe was the right thing at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and right. then she'd be in RCF and sent back to a hospital and back. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would happen too. Mm -hmm. So I, I sure think that the the services are are really really necessary. We'll have to talk about that more next. But yeah. for this program, we've run out of time. All right. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, we, thank you. We'll do another segment and cover some of the other stuff. It was right. very educational and. We've really kind of just scratched the surface on a lot of the stuff, but this is important life stuff. So. Well, thank you very much for inviting us. You're really welcome. appreciate it, and Take great it. hosts. Jay Sarah, Jay.